Hey, friends. There's just something about Robert Mitchum. Am I right? Film noir, westerns, war movies, good guys, bad guys, down on their luck guys, whatever the role, Mitchum always delivered and made it look easy. This time, we're taking a look at one of his films from the 1950s, which showcases Mitchum in his prime and firing on all cylinders. That's right. This time, it's Thunder Road from 1958. Our story goes like this. Lucas Doolin is a veteran just back from the Korean War, and he's running moonshine for his dad. See, a lot of the hillbilly folk in the valley have stills, and people like Lucas run their hooch across state lines in cars that have been modified with special tanks for the booze and beefed up engines so they can't be easily cut by the police or government men. Of all the drivers, Lucas is the most daring, and his exploits have drawn unwanted attention to his home valley. Lucas's brother is his chief mechanic, and Lucas won't allow the kid to take up the profession of driving hooch, knowing that it's too dangerous. There's a local girl who's taken a shine to Lucas, but is not interested in this mountain chick. He sees her as a kid, and he has a torch singer in the city that he's gaga for. A grown-up chick. <laughs> now, enter the villain of the piece. No, not the revenuers, but a wannabe big-time gangster, Kogan. Kogan is trying to organize the moonshine operations in the South, with himself as the boss, of course, and Lucas is in his way. He can't lock up Lucas's valley until Lucas is out of the picture. So now Lucas is being boxed in by federal men on the one hand and Kogan on the other. And Kogan plays rough. And when Kogan tries to get at Lucas by using Lucas's kid brother, Mitchum takes to the road, warning Kogan he's on his way for the final showdown. Aside from Robert Mitchum, in our cast we have Gene Barry as the government agent out to bust the rum runners. Aside from his starring turn in the TV series Burke's Law, his most famous role, arguably, was playing Dr. Clayton Forrester in George Powell's The War of the World. Mrs. Louis Prima, Keely Smith, is here as the lounge singer and love interest. She doesn't have all that much to do but sing. Of course, we're talking Keeley Smith here, so that's plenty. Peter Breck is here as Stacy Gouge. He was in lots of stuff. He was a regular on the Big Valley TV series, and he even played King Leonidas in The Sword and the Sorcerer. We also have Mitchell Ryan in his debut film as Jet, a very familiar face. He starred in tons of stuff. Everything from playing Burke Devlin on Dark Shadows to appearing in High Plains Drifter, Judge Dredd, Gross Point Blank. He also played Riker's dad in an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. And much, much more. And as a newcomer, he wasn't alone. Thunder Road was also the debut for both Sandra Knight as well as James Mitchum, Robert Mitchum's son, who plays his brother here. And another son, Christopher Mitchum, debuts as a member of a band playing a washboard in a scene at a local dance. Sandra Knight appeared in several horror movies, such as The Tower of London and The Terror with Jack Nicholson, and Frankenstein's Daughter, which came out the same year as this movie. This one's better. Thunder Road was also a debut for Jerry Harden. Harden went on to play Deep Throat on The X-Files, a lawyer in Big Trouble in Little China, and he played Mark Twain in the next-gen two-parter Time's Arrow. That doesn't even begin to scratch the surface of his screen credits. Thunder Road was the first film for Mitchum's independent production company, and it was a good choice, a fairly simple story with some stunts and action and easy-to-shoot scenes, and in spite of some wonky rear projection on occasion, it looks surprisingly good for the money they have. 
Mitchum himself co-wrote both the theme song, Ballad of Thunder Road, and a Keeley Smith number, The Whippoorwill, the instrumental of which plays throughout the picture's pared-down soundtrack as needed. So, I won't lie, I've always loved this film, in spite of the obvious limitations of the low budget. Mitchum really carries this thing, displaying quiet strength and even menace on occasion. A decent guy, but not a guy to mess around with. You don't want to be on his bad side, and he conveys all of that here. Nobody could do it like Mitchum. Now, Lucas is a veteran who has returned from war, and you can see him applying his military training to his runs. He plans every possibility and double-checks every detail so there are no slip-ups. And you wonder, does he have some kind of post-traumatic stress? Does he have survivor's guilt or what? Is that why he's so driven and so fatalistic? And even, maybe, a little reckless? At one point, he tells the mountain chick he wants to turn back the clock to a time he can't even remember anymore. It's little nuggets like that in the script that inform this character so perfectly and gives you something to chew on, and the fatalism Mitchum has here puts one in mind of film noir protagonists, even though this isn't really a film noir. As for realism, all of the tanker cars driven by the moonshiners were real moonshine runners' cars. <laughs> they sold them to the production and used the proceeds to buy newer, better cars to run their hooch. <laughs> and the garages and shacks and stills and all of that have a reality as well, even if they're movie sets. Thunder Road does indeed suffer from the low budget and some inexperienced actors, such as James Mitchum. His line delivery is not so great. But it's an amazing and unusual artifact from the 1950s, which gives us a look into the culture of moonshiners and ridge runners as they existed at the time. It's not your typical crime movie, and there's a lot to love. So I'm giving Thunder Road. Three paws up! Don't let the low budget fool you. This film is well, well worth a watch. You take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one.